But if there is a page, what we want to do is send it back to our make request. So let's return a make request again for our response. Generally speaking, you should probably not use recursion. You should always iterate if you can do, especially when you're working with large amounts of data or large numbers. But this use case that I'm going to show you now, where we're going to be using the fact that the API response has the next page URL in it, we're going to create our function to actually call itself back using that new URL so we can go through all the pages and get the data. I think doing this avoids most of the pitfalls of recursion and a recursive function, and we have a good break clause that we can use too. So I'm going to show you the code and let me know in the comment section down below whether you think this is a good idea or not. Should I do this or should I just go back to the normal way of doing it? If you've ever sat down to work only to be distracted by other less important tasks, then I think the sponsor of today's video, Rise, will be a great fit for you. So Rise is a desktop app for Windows and Mac that intelligently and automatically tracks the time spent at work on your computer. Using its categories, you'll be able to clearly see where you are spending most of your working time, and it will help you improve your working habits and increase your productivity. As a developer and content creator, being able to see what my time goes into is very, very valuable. The ability to check on how I'm spending that time keeps me on track to reach the goals I've set for myself. Getting more done in an efficient manner is an absolute no-brainer. You can track all your metrics, giving you an idea of where you're at compared to previous days, and also it helps avoiding burnout by giving you automatic notifications to tell you to take a break. So try Rise for free and increase your productivity. The first 1,000 people to sign up using my code, John Watson Rooney, or the link in the description below will get 25% off their first three months with Rise. So thank you very much to Rise for sponsoring this video. So this is a pretty typical API response that you might get from, in this case, this is just a free and open API, but it could be one that you're paying to use or maybe one from your company. So what's good about this is we have our results down here within a list, and then we have this info section at the top. Now this gives us a total count, which is always handy to reference back to, the number of pages, and also this next URL link. This is pretty common. What you might get is a URL that looks something like this, or maybe it will be a string that you'll need to send, put in into a, a post into a response to get the next page. Either way, this is quite a simplified version, but they all seem to work. They all work in that way. Now if I click on this link, we'll get the next load of pages. You can see we started the next ID and we also have a previous one. So what we can actually do is if we go to the final page, which is 42, you'll notice that the next page is just blank. So what we can, we can actually use that to break out of our recursion when we write our code. So let's go to our code editor and import in requests. And we're also going to, uh, and that'll do for the moment. We, if we need JSON, we'll do that later. So the first thing I do is write a new function, and we're going to call this one just data get like this, and we're going to give it a URL that we need. Now I'm going to create a list now to append everything to. You could do it this way, or if you have loads and loads of pages to go through and you're storing this data in a database, you would want to add it in as you go through. Uh, otherwise, you could end up, if there's something goes wrong down the line, you'll have pulled out a load of data and it will just die in memory rather than storing it as you go. But in this case, just going to be a list for now. So I'm going to call this one totals, which is our blank list. Now we're going to create a new function within this function, and this is going to be our recursive function. So let's say make a request Ooh, like this, and we're going to give this the URL as well. So we're going to go through in this function, we're going to make the request to the page that we're on. Then we're going to append all of the results that we got from that page to our totals list, which is outside of this function, but is still available to us. And then we're going to see if there's a next page link. And if there is, we're going to go and recursively call this function again with that new link. So we basically use this to spin round and round and round through all the pages and get us the data. So let's do response is equal to uh, requests.get and the URL, which we're going to give it. And then we want to loop through the items. Uh, actually, I'll just print the URL so we can we can see it going through as we as we run this. So let's print let's uh, loop through iterate through all the items. So for item in, and it's response dot JSON, and the key was results like this. Let's append all of these to our totals list. So we'll do totals dot append each item. So in our response here, if I go raw data, 
you'll see that uh, here's the info part and here are the results. The results is a list. So each one of these is iterable. And all I'm going to do is just sort store that whole chunk of JSON into our, uh, our into our totals list. So that's all good. So now we're dealing with the data that we wanted to actually get from that page. So now let's check to see if we need to break out of this function, which I'm going to make recursive. So let's say if our response.json and the key was info and it was, I believe, called next. So let's say if that is none, we just want to return out. We just want to come out of our make request function. We're done. There's no more pages. Let's just straight return. But if there is a page, what we want to do is send it back to our make request. So let's return a make request again for our response.json and grab the new page, which is uh, info and then next. This was a straight URL, so we don't need to worry about it. So we can now just return a new version of this function to this new URL. And then we're going to go through and we'll see here, we'll go to the next page and we'll see it print out and we'll be appending the results here. So to get this to work now, we just need to say we want to call our make request for the first time because we're actually outside of here now. So we want to actually call this on the main starting URL and then just return out the uh, totals uh, list there. Now this is it. So this one, in, this function inside here is our uh, recursive function. We're breaking out of it if we don't find that next page link. And we're going to return a nice long list with all of the information in. Again, you could be doing something with it. So it might look slightly different to this. So let's go ahead and run this. So we'll just, let's print out the length, I think would be the easiest. Otherwise we'll end up with a load of data just flooding the screen. And I just need to grab the URL for the first page and stick that there like that. So let's try this and run it. So we can see all the pages coming through as it goes through. And once we get to that last page, which was 42, we hit that breakpoint. We have 826 results and we have an 826 results there from the count on the API. So that's it. What do you think? Is this a good use of recursion or are we just causing ourselves loads of problems further down the line? Let me know in the comments. And if you've enjoyed this video and want to learn how to work with APIs a bit more, you're going to want to watch this one here next.